Hello, fellow kids. Today, I'll be presenting a short science experiment. Who does not love an experiment? On a chemical change. A chemical change is when um, two, two materials uh, are mixed together and a new substance is formed. And it cannot be, and it's irreversible. That is a chemical change. A physical change. A physical change is when two things are mixed up together, but it is still reversible. There are a few questions to consider for this experiment. The first, the first question to consider is what determines the rate at a chemical at which a chemical change happens. In other words, when a factor makes one chemical change happen fast or quickly, which what while other happens very slowly. Is it the surface area of the type or the type of materials used? Important. I will consider this question by investigating a chemical change that produces we breathe oxygen, but then when we breathe out, we breathe we breathe out carbon dioxide gas. My Hypothesis or guess or predictions before the experiment are chemical change happens through a chemical reaction when two or more materials are mixed, as I just said when I was beginning. Chemical change is irreversible and it can lead to the formation of new materials such as gases, as examples include oxygen, we breathe in, we breathe out carbon dioxide. The, my third hypothesis is chemical changes can happen happen quickly or slowly, depending on the type of materials you see the used or the state of the materials, as you can see in my two materials here. I'll conduct two experiments, not just one, two. Who does not love experiments? It's really good and it's really exciting. And when we have hypotheses and our guesses are wrong, that doesn't mean we're the worst. I'm going to die. No, 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 no. It means that our guess was not correct, and we didn't. We need to investigate and see why it did not do as we planned it would be. Experiment one. Step one: measure 150 milliliters of water, of warm water, and mix it with six spoons of sugar. So I'm just gonna put my safety glasses. Time to get working. So let me just get some more water here. I'm just gonna pour it in this measuring cup. Whee! Now I'm just gonna pour it in. So I'm just likely gonna get something, a container, to make it easier so I don't have a big spill. All right, I'm just gonna put it in here. I'm just gonna put 50 more Whee! into a cup I go again. Into the here. Just a little past it, but it's okay. And just put it in here. Now, we're going to need, just gonna put this here. Then I'll cut it by you go. And we're just going to put six spoons. One, two, three, four. Sack. Actually, that should be enough. Just find something to mix it. I just use this like stick. Just mix it, mix, 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 mix it up all. Now I'm just gonna get some yeast. Bottle. I'm just gonna put it into like this cupcake wrapper. Because I don't have a funnel here. Two, three, four. Now. Put the sugar water into this cup again. 
pour the sugar solution as I mixed the sugar and water into the bottle of yeast. So just be really gentle. Just put the remaining one. The remaining one. We're gonna do step four. We're gonna, gonna put the balloon on. Let's just get some. And as you can see, we should mix it up a little bit. You want the carbon dioxide to come up and put it into the ball, come into the balloon. We're gonna put the stopwatch on. See, serene. Stopwatch on. As you can see, there's already some small air. That means the carbon dioxide is already coming into the balloon. Whee! So, I'm just gonna face the balloon this way. So you can see, since we have done experiment one and we have done, start, started the stopwatch, you can also see there's small carbon dioxide. Let's get on to experiment two. I'll control the surface area of the baking soda by, by placing it in a layer of thin tissue paper. Put it down. So I'm just going to put four spoons in the exact thing. It's a little bit too much, but it's okay. We're just going to put a healthy amount. That's why I picked four. And one last scoop. Now we're going to tie this up, bundle it, and we'll be using a twist tie. I'm going to be using vinegar and I'll be putting 150 milliliters. Now let's put 100. And I'm just going to pour it into the bottle. Now put 150. Put the fifty right direct into the bottle. <laughs> okay, as we as we're about to put this into the bottle, you can see that oh look, there's actually something happening here. Yep, carbon. What is this? Let's guess. You should guess a couple times. Are you saying oxygen? Nope. It is carbon dioxide. It took 12 minutes and 25, 12, tw yeah, 12 minutes and 25 seconds to get, to get a small amount. So now we're just going to put it, put the baking soda and It's in. It is fizzing, as you can see. And stopwatch on. It's fizzing. Whoa. That's so cool. Look, it's already that big. We should measure it. Kalipa, so we're gonna put a zero mark. It is hundred two point seventy seven, as you can see right here. Let me just bring it a little closer. And the time for that one is already forty fifty one seconds. Now let me do one more measurement to compare compare both. Hundred. 114.96. And right now it is 2 minutes and 46 seconds. We want to measure this. Okay. 37.84 millimeters. And it's right now 
17 minutes and 37 seconds right now. And it's only that tiny. Wow. So let's talk about the results. In both experiments, one and two, one and two, I observed that this balloon increases in size. This means that the new material is being produced. The material in this balloon must be a gas because only gases can infl inf inflate or increase a balloon. For this type of chemical change, the gas must be carbon dioxide. We can see that this chemical change using baking soda and vinegar happened very quickly because the balloon rises very fast. And the reaction involves sugar solution and the yeast is much slower. It took about six minutes and ten seconds, and the other one is twenty minute, twenty minutes, and right now four seconds. Let's just have another look. Ooh, it is really big. And hmm, look at this. One hundred sixteen point point. Yeah, 116.3 millimeters. And right now it is 6 minutes and 53, 55 seconds. And just for this tiny little balloon. Right here. It's 36.3. And the stopwatch right now is already 21 minutes and 7 seconds. So, what did you learn? Or did we learn in general? I learned that a chemical change, as we have done two experiments. Who does not like experiments? Who does not? Because that can react. So, we learned that a chemical change happens when two materials that can react are mixed. In both experiments, I can confirm that the chemical change happened when I mixed sugar, solu sugar solution and yeast for A, experiment, and B, baking soda and vinegar because a new material was produced. And that material was carbon dioxide gas. The reaction between sugar solution and yeast is called fermentation. And it is and it is a common reaction boom, to make bread, beer, or wine. I also learned, or we also learned, that the material produced, carbon dioxide gas, during the chemical reaction was carbon dioxide gas. Carbon dioxide gas, which is a gas, as I already said. Yahoo! Without the balloon to trap it, the gas will escape into the environment, which means it cannot be reconverted re to, to the material that produced it. That means it will go into <sighs> This confirms that the chemical chains are irreversible. I also learned that the chemical changes can happen very quickly, very quickly, or slowly, like. This one, but this one's fast. Certain certain chemical changes in nature in nature happens very slowly. An example is a long word photosynthesis in plants, which produce oxygen as a byproduct. It would be good to cut future work. It would be good to conduct and control experiments for experiments too without using a tissue paper to control the surface area of baking soda. Instead, place the entire powder of baking soda in the container of vinegar and compare the rate the rate of rise of the balloon in the two in the two cases. I would expect that the physical state of the materials used during a chemical change. Example, whether it is powder or solid would affect the rate of the reaction, fast and slow chemical changes.
conclusion as confirmed by the by way of experiment experiment that some chemical changes happen quickly while others happen more slowly like this one in each case new materials are produced and are irreversible thank you for watching see ya